Modern Warfare 3 is now a few days old, and with its launch, especially right now, it's pretty sweaty. So if you're like me and having quite a bit of thoughts of how can I do better in my games, this video is for you. Today, we're running down our annual tips to improve guide, giving you some hopeful, helpful points in game and out of game to craft the best possible chance for you to do as well as you can. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Firstly, or missing out on any glaring tips? If so, feel free to share down below. We're all here for the same reason, to simply do better. Additionally, let me know how you've been doing in your games and your thoughts so far. If you enjoyed the video, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay with all things Modern Warfare 3. We've got you covered with the best in guides, tips, and tutorials, news, and all. So I'd love to have you in the community as we chase down 600,000 subscribers. Final notes, use code ESPRESSO for 30% off G Fuel to fuel your COD grind this season. And come join us on Twitch as we grind out weapons and camos throughout this launch season. I'd love to chat with you all. But anyways, let's jump into the tips. First and foremost, let's talk about stuff for sort of prep work, out of game things. This year, as with any, mastering gunsmith is a huge benefit here that can help you out in game and long term. With Modern Warfare 3's launch, there's new and carry forward attachments. So there's tons to choose from, but again, with them being cross compatible in some degree, that means that you may be able to have your preferred attachment like a certain optic right out of the gate instead of like last year, having to rank up, say, three different weapons that you didn't really care for just to get that singular red dot sight. Same thing goes with some other attachments. So when you unlock a weapons, create a class category, optic, barrel, magazine, see if there's anything that you may be able to apply right out of the gate. But beyond that, crafting your weaponry, for me, historically speaking, I usually try to max out ADS where possible because I like that snappy nature. But I like to do that without the sacrifice of damage range or other potential for kills here and there. This year, with the TTK being higher, though, there's another thing you should totally throw into that mix of what you should kit your weapon out for. And to me, that's prioritizing recoil controlling attachments, mitigation for anything that may cause too much bounce and make you miss crucial shots in your gunfights. This year, the TTK is much higher, so it's going to require two to three more shots at base. Some weapons like the MCW will have almost zero recoil when kitted properly, but others still may take a little bit of control where pulling down on that right thumbstick is absolutely necessary still, but you're going to be able to do your best to mitigate it where possible if you kit out with attachments like that. Now, a nice new feature is that there is that filter system for attachments now, so that you shouldn't have to spend too much time searching for what you may want. Plus, again, detailed statistics will give you even better recognition of, okay, this might be the best for recoil mitigation. This may be the best for ADS speed. There's even an option to favorite attachments as well so that you have quick access to them if there's one that you particularly really enjoy. But anyways, with the higher TTK, you'll want to hit those shots, so kit your weapons accordingly to how you see fit. doesn't have to necessarily be like I recommend for recoil control and ADS, but those are what I would recommend. Anyways, beyond that, perks are something that's very important to master this year as well. With the removal of the perk package system, thankfully we don't have a timed rollout of perks, but you still keep for the most part those four perks that the previous system introduced. Sometimes you'll end up having more, sometimes less, but overall you have at base some effects of the infantry vest, which is kind of like a perk, but like a base perk per se. You have gloves, boots, and gear. Sometimes with the existing vest, you lose a boot category, but gain a gear category. So it depends on how you want to play with those overall vests. But anyways, take a look at vests to learn the ins and outs of them, because not only do they alter the value of things like that gear and perks on offer, but sometimes they can give additional bonuses or make up for bonuses beyond that. So for example, the infantry vest gives you increased tax sprint duration and reduces its refresh time, but it does clearly state that duplicate effects do not stack. So when you take a look at something like, say, the running sneakers, that gives the exact same benefits and attributes as the infantry vest does, increased tax sprint and reduces the refresh time. So if you had both of those equipped, it doesn't make it faster. So you'd essentially be losing a perk, but at base, that infantry vest will give you the effects of the lightweight boots if combined with that running sneaker. So you're always going to have something that makes up for any crossover that may negate and not give extra additional bonus. Bonuses. But there's also other situations that it may be even beneficial to do that because, for example, the marksman gloves are pretty beneficial, right? If you haven't seen what those are, it reduces sway and flinch while ADS. So that means that if you're taking gunfire and getting shot, your aim isn't going to bob as much with each hit that ends up landing on you. So very important. It's basically your toughness from COD games in the past. But those are locked behind the armory unlock system. And some people actually can't unlock that right now because their daily challenges are bugged. But if you equip the overkill vest with the quick grip or or commando gloves, you'll get the marksman gloves for free, which is nice because the overkill vest actually has 
two effects to it that are paired out to two different glove types. So you cancel one glove, gain the effects of another, and then get a bonus of another glove on top of that. So while it's kind of a fine print, check out those vests and what may be best for your setup. Beyond that, streaks are incredibly important to master and learn here before jumping in as well, because one of the big things that can help you out is that just like last year, you can end up using those kill or score streaks with a simple toggle. You don't have to use any perk like you had to do in the past, so definitely nice to play into the objective here while also getting rewarded. One thing initially also speaking is to consider running the UAV because Ghost currently is locked behind that armory unlock system like we just mentioned. So you may not see nearly as many people paying attention to getting Ghost because it is locked behind that weird unlock system. So especially right now, given that it's not something that's just progressed and unlocked through one to 55, you have to do an additional challenge to unlock. That's something that maybe in a couple of weeks time, you see more people running it so it doesn't have nearly as much effect, but that information can absolutely help you and your team out. Now, talking about that armory unlock system, I know that for some, it's entirely unusable right now. That's a bug that's being worked on, it's been acknowledged, and there is going to be a fix coming. But if your dailies are tracking, make sure that not only one, you're doing those daily challenges to end up getting credit for your armory unlock system, but also make sure you get a queue going in your unlock system so that you can chain together challenges and wins and not have to pay attention to it. If you end up completing those daily challenges, you end up getting wins that count as additional points. That is something that can be very passive towards going for this just simply by playing. If you're consistently winning, you're consistently consistently adding a point to that total after you've completed your three daily challenges. That bonus, it just goes down to win criteria at that point. So you'll be working towards an unlock without really having to pay attention to it. If you set a queue, worst case, the lowest number of challenges for a single unlock is three wins or three points per se. So you can do one in three daily challenges that you can knock out in one game. But when you have to get to that bonus that it's one game that adds a point, well, it's again, nine matches on a daily win bonus before you have to think about switching or adding new things to that queue. But there are other other items that are like five and eight point criteria that will take longer. So it's a really passive way to keep earning really key things that can help you out. Weaponry, perks like Ghost, streaks like the Advanced UAV, utilities like Stims, you name it. So get a queue going in there so that you can not have to pay attention to that and you can keep unlocking things to make your gameplay experience better. Next, let's move on over into the in-game tips. Weapon selection, while I'm absolutely just working on my weapons right now to rank them all up and currently going for camos beyond that, that's a big area of where I fall short in gunfights, absolutely. Fully recognize that pistols aren't going to exactly be competitive against primaries, but when I'm playing for keeps, ARs are definitely the dominant meta right now. So if you're not ranking stuff up, going for camos, ARs, I'd say are your best choice in the book right now. The DG58 burst is insane. Just about a one burst at most ranges if you can hit all your shots. The MCW almost has negative recoil, so that's the easiest thing to control. And while it's kind of middle of the pack for damage, it's just, it's so easy to use that it's a front runner. The SVA 545 may be a weapon that people are using just because it came along with the vault edition and you have those attachments unlocked immediately. But the SVA is pretty insane because those first three shots shots of the magazine have a faster fire rate than the rest of the mag, just like the AN-94 in prior games, because that is what it's supposed to be. But anyways, if you end up hitting those shots, especially those first ones, you're going to get those kills a lot faster than some other players would. But it really comes down to picking a class and weaponry that feels comfortable to you. You can, but don't have to sprint around the map the whole time. You can use things like those stalker boots to strafe corners. You can use that momentum to slide cancel and slide across doorways or reposition. Not saying to camp, but you don't have to go full movement demon with SMGs and stims to do well. You can find that middle ground between camping and watching a singular doorway all match and running around right down mid map and getting lasered. There is definitely middle ground there. So beyond that, take some time to learn some basic recoil patterns. While some weapons, again, like the MCW, feel like they don't have any, going into the firing range, while we don't have a sort of recoil plot for that, you can do the same thing on the wall. You can get the same basic premise and learn how that pattern acts accordingly. And then when you figure that out, you you can adjust in how you pull down whenever you're unloading a magazine in game. Additionally, be ready for engagements. While it's not like Modern Warfare 2019, Vanguard, or Modern Warfare 2 with incredibly fast TTKs by comparison, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be ready for a gunfight. The pace of play has changed drastically compared to last year, and we'll touch on that in a second. So having that gun up and being ready, being mentally aware of where the flow of play is coming from, where a gunfight could be coming from, where that enemy territory may be, and when you should be expecting a fight is 
huge. Again, I've said it before, I'm a big fan of the Stalker boots. That increased strafe speed while ADS is so massive and can be a massive help. But what's nice is that even at base, Modern Warfare 3 strafe speeds are much faster speed than last year. So you can end up having that gun up and turning a corner and not necessarily having to worry about being stuck in cement and moving at an absolute snail's pace. So that is absolutely something that having your gun up and getting ready for those engagements, especially if you may be in enemy territory, that's huge. Additionally, recognize the pacing change here this year. Movement is back, and while initially here at launch, the tax sprint reset is bugged, that's being fixed. Even with that out of the equation though, it's still a massive change of pace, and the speed of the game is increased tremendously compared to last year. So use that to your advantage practice slide cancels. And I'm not even like talking like being a movement demon that you'd see on TikTok clips or something like that. I'm more so just talking around like sliding past doorways, entry points, and other areas that enemies may be able to cover and camp out. Break their camera by sliding around that corner. Slide cancel to a barrier that provides cover. Practice that type of stuff because that to me is the beneficial part, not necessarily the movement demon type stuff. Like sure, yeah, it's cool you can do all that, but at the same time, if you can get from point A to point B and get a gunfight off and win it with three button clicks, run, slide, cancel, as opposed to button mashing and YYing the entire time, I don't really see any difference. I mean, one's just a little less complicated. So practice slide canceling, practice that movement a bit here to your benefit. Power positionings are also everything, whether it's 6v6 or ground war, every single map has power positions that you can control and you'll do well with. Unfortunately with ground war, there is just a lot of rooftops. Levin Resort is such a weird layout for a map in my opinion, like it's just one giant massive structure in the center and one skyscraper there with multiple levels. So like that is a lot of verticality, but then you have other areas Areas that can be power positions there, but also in the 6v6 maps, there's plenty that can come to mind as well. So use those to your advantage if you have any sort of height. That, of course, as we've talked about so many times in the past, can dictate the pace of play because if you get shot at, you can back off and the player has to push to you then. So you control how that play happens when you want to pop back up and when you want to re-challenge that and they have to make that first move, which then you can act on. But additionally, other lanes of play, other head glitches, again, it doesn't have to just be verticality. Beyond that, movement and map traverse learning the flow of the map, finding those power positions, circumnavigating them for flanks, that's all huge and key important stuff that you absolutely want to learn. Now, while some of these may play exactly the same in regards to those flank routes that you may remember from 2009, if you've been around since the original Modern Warfare 2, that's something that you can jump right in and probably do well with in that regard right out of the gate. But if this is something that you're playing all these maps for the very first time, it might take a little bit of time to get used to. But again, that comes down to just simply playing the game and keeping at it. And finally, in regards to stuff, that you can control in game sort of is information is everything especially in the context of being ready for a gunfight reading your mini map is huge red dots are back i mean that's something that gives you much more information than just okay if there's dead space around me i don't see any teammates maybe i'm behind enemy lines here you can see exactly where gunfights are coming from if they're in the immediate vicinity or if they're off in the distance that's something that can help you out tremendously picking streaks that can help you give information is also important as well uavs if you unlock that advantage UAV from the armory unlock. Those are all great options. Lethals are always fun, but depending on what you want out of your streaks, sometimes I'd take the advanced UAV and UAVs over any others. Honestly, the last couple of years I've been running a UAV at the very least, and then sort of having the information streaks as my primaries rather than my lethals. I don't really care too much about the aerial streaks or stuff like that because I'll just get the gun kills myself. Unrelated to the gameplay itself, if you have the ability to, play it with a headset. Having that sound directly in your ear instead of having to space travel from a TV to you on the couch, that is something that you'll definitely notice a difference. You'll hear much more footstep audio. You'll be able to discern where enemies are coming from just by that audio so much more. So that's absolutely something that is beneficial. And the final, final thing we'll talk about here is to, if possible, play in a party. We talk about this every single time because playing in a party is something that gives you more information. I mean, you have at least one other set of eyes that can spot enemies for you, sometimes upwards of five other sets of eyes. So to be able to make those call outs and communicate where enemies are, that's just something that helps you have a better time as is. And not to mention, a lot of the times you can brute force matchmaking that way. If you're a solo, and trust me, I play solo a ton, it can be a miserable experience because oftentimes if you are a good player, you're gonna be matched up with 
three, four, sometimes five other players that aren't as good as you to balance out those teams. And so therefore, it's basically a one or two V six in some games whenever you're playing multiplayer because the enemy team is usually way more balanced. But if you can end up playing in a party, especially if you get to like a full five or six man, there's not too many of those that you'll probably come in contact with. So you'll be able to brute force that matchmaking to have a better time in that. And also, he might not even really be trying all that much because you have that information from your teammates that can give you the easy heads up that you don't need any sort of UAV to know where a player is. You can just pick players off left, right, and center at that point. So there's a lot of ways to go about it, but those are my top tips here for launch on how to do better and immediately improve your game. So that said, that is what we're going to call it. Before we wrap everything up, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel. Code Espresso can get you 30% off your entire order to fuel your COD grind this season. So grabbing a restock right now is as best a time as any or trying it out for the first time which if you are highly recommend things like the morbius nectarine flavor hype sauce pink drip strawberry banana my team of carnage we just put out our flavor of pog juice love that one i'm actually drinking that right now as i record this so if you guys want to check those out or any other flavor truly can't recommend them enough love the guys g fuels like my cup of coffee in the morning gets that productivity going every single day so if you guys want to check it out link in the description below and again code espresso can get you 30 percent off your entire order but that said that's now we're going to wrap it up so let me know your thoughts down below what do you think of these tips anything that you would add subtract whatever the case feel free to let me know if you enjoyed the video you found it out on insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things modern warfare 3 we're only just getting started so we'll have you covered with absolutely everything you need to know for now though thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you later take care and peace